Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Parts. Excessive conversation about Jurassic Park in bite-sized chunks. And we've spared no expense, I assure you. I'm Nathan Bickley. I'm Brianne Reynolds. I'm Hunter Lewis. And we're talking about the first 15 minutes. This is part one. So, right away, start off with the... Right away, it starts off with the Universal logo. Um... No music. Silent universe yeah. logo. Yeah. Uh, prehistoric crickets. Cr- cricketing <laughs> over there and little ominous, ominous sounds. Um, I, I think that's, I think it's really powerful. I, I like the way it starts without, without any I haven't cheesiness. S- I haven't seen the universe logo in a while. Have I just not seen any movies? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Or has it changed? Uh, yeah, they might've been bought out or gone out of business. Yeah, I'm not sure. I got. I was thinking with with the crickets being in the background. Does Universal usually have any like signature sound? Yes. Oh, there were crickets. I didn't hear the crickets. It came in later. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> there's yeah, definitely. I don't know what it is, but there's definitely some sort of Universal sound that I was noticing the absence of. A Universal Universal sound. <laughs> it was like like no, I know with, like DreamWorks <laughs> has that little like song oh, yeah. that you can like recognize, but Fox has the. The best one. The, the drumming band. Yep. thing. <laughs> MGM's got the lion. Um, I've always been partial to new lions, ladders, and... Oh, you know what? I always thought those were ladders. They're actually film. Like, the side <laughs> of Belgium. But as a kid, I always thought they were ladders on the side of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo and whatnot. Uh, All right, and then we come right in with, uh, with a very iconic font. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, forgot, I, I forgot how bad that font is. Dated. It, it's very dated. But um, as is most, I a lot of the mise en scene uh, of all of it is very dated. Uh, um, a lot of the fashion choices and uh, we'll get there. Choices, yeah. <laughs> the um, yeah the but it's still very iconic. Yeah, like I, I I don't think even I don't think it really started a trend for how fonts would look. But you do recognize it that like right. orange with. I kind of want to download red. it. Yeah, Just it's write a, a letter. Yeah, it's Turn a, in your resume. It's a very like early nineties uh the way it's colored, like mm-hmm. that really, really sharp gradient. Yeah, it's got a core of red. Right. And the way it faded out, the core of red was left and it was almost like a crappy computer uh I don't know, it was it was it was little little dashes. Yeah, yeah. Um well and I not to skip into the next scene, but what b- really bothered me, um, which is weird because Watching something, knowing that you're then going to talk about it and it's going to be recorded, you obviously pay more attention to everything. And it really bugged me how um, it jumped to the next scene and it said uh, where the scene takes place. And it was Times New Roman with like a black (laughs) with like a black drop shadow. And it it was just a really jarring (laughs) switch from that Jurassic Park logo or a font. But then I don't know if it would have been even worse if they had used that yeah. font to label where <laughs> they were, but it, it was a really weird, it was a really weird juxtaposition. Definitely a title font. I don't know if you could write too small with that. What did they show? Just the title? Uh, it said Amblin. It said uh, maybe something presents Amblin, Amblin production, which is Steven Spielberg's. Yeah, it was like three things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it was Jurassic Park, and then let's go right into it, because, uh, so where are they? Actually, he didn't write this down, 150 miles they, they the are of, in Isla Nublar. I don't Isla know Nublar. Oh, I thought it was Isla Sorna. Is it that said, Lost World? No, it's it said in the beginning. Isla Nublar. Yeah, I think Isla and, Sorna might be the next one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that scene, for those of you if you're reading the book, this is referred to as the engine incident. That's not a slur. I N G E N. Oh, it is I N. There were some migrant workers. <laughs> Yeah, the, the very first. Oh, let's. I, so, so they kind of do a fake out right away. You're seeing a bunch of guys. You, you're you, seeing you, trees you see, moving. You see the trees rustling. You see a right. bunch of guys. They're all wearing the movie logo on their hat. <laughs> same. They're on their hard hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, same as same sticker that was on my lunchbox as a kid. And and you think surely a dinosaur is going to come out of here. The whole thing's lit like a play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or like it, it's a very bright spot that's on it. That's obviously from behind, 
And then what should come out of these rustling palm trees but a forklift? Right. <laughs> Which well, <laughs> kind of makes you wonder why it's not going around the trees. Why didn't they build a, <laughs> why didn't they build a road for this forklift? <laughs> Forklifts go wherever the hell they want. Just bamboo plow right through it. <laughs> bamboo plants can grow up to four feet a day, so maybe they maybe they plowed it two days ago. Um, <laughs> The driver needs to take his forklift exam again. <laughs> yes. So then uh, they've got a huge crew, which um, you... they're they're the loading crew. Uh, what is it called? The pushing team. I think they also function as the loading crew. And our and our Australian hero, who I'm assuming is going to be the main character in this story, <laughs> yells at them to. Uh, <laughs> they've got this whole concrete thing set up, but. It's still the best option to have, like, 12 people just shove the box up. Yeah. Um, and what it, it's, you, you don't know what all the rest of those people are doing. It took, like, two two people, really. Like, one to push the box up and one to, like, open the door. Well, I, think, <laughs> I think it... It's heavy. One of the, the things that that helps um, set up is that it... Sh- it it shows that he has authority, like that yes. he has like tons of people around him mm-hmm. that he's in charge of. Um, well, they all have to wear the same vest and hat, and he gets to wear his khaki, his cutoffs. He, he, they're all cleanly shaven, and he's got a little little I, Aussie stubble. I want to know where this stereotype comes from. This like <laughs> this Australian hunter with tiny cutoffs, all tan, like all khaki. And that hat. Like, is it, am I making that up or is this like an archetype that well, I feel like. Well, I did live in Australia and that's how we all dress when we're in the outback. And, and you're all and hunters? Then, when you wanted to go, you know, on walkabout, go around the world, you definitely want to dress like that because then they'll be like, that guy's Australian. Well, wait, isn't the, isn't there a hunter in Lost World that is yeah. also Australian? This, or? No, I think he's character, British. This character, his name. Can I say his name? His name is Robert Muldoon. In okay. the book, oh. in the book, he used to be a like a big game safari or a big game hunter leader oh, person. Yeah. So it would like take rich people sure. out they, to I, hunt big expensive. Is he Australian? Where, they don't ever say that. I think you're I, not wrong. I think they <laughs> did take some of the aspects of his character and move them into that character in Lost World. Because in this one, he doesn't. They don't really ever say anything about him. But in the next one, it is a it is a big game hunter specifically. He is a hunter specifically. This and guy just kind of has that vibe mostly because of his cat. Oh, yeah. So I think, I think probably that, blending him with the character in Lost World. Which, yeah, there's several things from the book of Jurassic Park that they moved into Lost World, the movie, and a lot of things in that movie that aren't in any of the books. Okay, either of them. But I'd still like to know where this archetype comes from because mm-hmm. isn't it sort of what Crocodile Dundee is a parody of oh, I, I feel like this is like an archetype he's got like the the bottom outfit of like steve Irwin. right I, should we call this guy dinosaur hunter or, or i guess steve it's Irwin. not a, <laughs> yeah we'll call him. um but well yeah and so like and steve Irwin would just be like a caricature of this same archetype well, but he's a real I'm assuming, person i'm assuming like the, the hat <laughs> was the hat if you're like a big game hunter you do have to wear a hat to like block the sun but you would want to pin up one side so you could like aim your gun at stuff oh maybe, interesting maybe that would be the functionality that i could see from it did he have one side pinned up i wasn't yeah the all all hunter archetypes do Huh. Oh. Well, <laughs> oh man, we've spent forever we, on this we, guy. We, better- <laughs> we need to re- we need to do some research about h- hunters and why this is what it is. I I swear there's something there. And it, just before we move on, really quickly, I think that's something um, in like '90s blockbuster movies is like there's no there's not a lot of nuances in mm-hmm. the types of characters they are. Like with the hunter, even the main characters are yeah. such paleo or paleontologist like with a capital p uh-huh. and like um the main scientist guy hammond he's like they're all kind they're all slightly caricatured i feel like a little bit well yeah and they're all characterized way different than in way differently than in the book okay because well we'll, we'll talk about yeah, that we'll later it. but so so they're pushing the thing up they push it to the wall he calls over the gatekeeper everyone's got their their little titles. Yeah. Uh, that guy climbs up. He's kind of nervous. And 
and I noticed the score at this point is very John Wilmsian. It's 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 like a very kind of it echoes a lot of the Star Wars type score during this scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really good. Uh, I I I like it. Um, so you you were wondering. It's well, it's kind of unclear. Um, net like as he's lifting the the gate up, which. We all assume it, like, they're transferring these dinosaurs from this little box, or we assume they're dinosaurs. Um, I think we see its eye. From this box to whatever they're going to. For some reason, he he falls off, but it's not very clear what makes him fall off of the box. Here's what I think. Do you have a theory? Well, there... I was very confused during the whole thing. It's not very clear what is happening at all. I was confused as a kid, but here's what I'm pretty sure happens, is there's the Velociraptors in there... And they're she, uh, really smart. She is really smart. Um, when they pull it up, she slams into the wall as as they're to, like it's, it's kind of touching the wall because they want it to make a complete seal. So she slams into the wall, which the momentum, the opposite reaction of that through physics is to push the box that she's in back because that force has to go somewhere and she, the wall doesn't move. She pushes the. Other side of the wall. Yeah, she pushes on the door frame of what they're going into, I think. And then that's what pushes the whole box back and makes that guy fall in between the door and the... Or what if she's... Well, I just thought the opposite of that. She could be pushing the other side of the box, which would make the box move Oh, that way. Or there could be more than... I think it's quite possible there's more than one in there. No. Uh, well, and she just does this when, like, they're trying to secure it, like, yeah. attach it, and it happens before they can get they, it. They, it's their own fault, because they should have had some things to secure it to the wall, and they don't. Or, because, because they're just pushing it there, and then they open up the door, but if they had a little padlock, or they had a little latch to hold it onto the wall before they open that gate, that wouldn't have happened. But, you know... There's not a lot of precedent for moving these these dinosaurs around. I, or they could just <laughs> have not played God at all and not made <laughs> well, sure. super intelligent uh, extinct predators. Yeah. I think I, that's every other movie, though. <laughs> There's a lot of other problems people can have. Um, okay, so that, that answers my question. I was very confused of what was even going yeah. on. So they shoved those electro things in there. They're shocking her. I don't know if they tested those out. They don't seem well, to work had, at all. He had said earlier, like, everybody put your tasers on full charge. Yep. Or, and I don't, yeah. I don't know if there's, like, a halfway charged on tasers. but <laughs> Yeah, they didn't do a close-up on the knob. <laughs> huh. But, yeah. And then he yells, shoot her! Got a shoot lot of her! Well, his, it's very romantic how this, this guy's arm is just pulled right through his fingers. Um, very <laughs> strange close-ups of mm-hmm. his body parts, or his <laughs> eyes and his mouth. His teeth. This, his teeth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this movie, a lot of close-ups. The next scene is going to end up on a close-up, and the next scene is going to start on a close-up. I'll take note on that. I, yeah, it's really interesting re-watching this movie, or the first 15 minutes, uh, with such a critical eye. Um, I was, about this scene that, um struck me is Steven Spielberg has this very iconic way of using lighting at night, Mm -hmm. but it's more so in his pre, uh, CGI days in Jurassic Park in, especially in that scene, it's, he uses, um, every beam of light and it's always foggy Mm -hmm. or dusty. So there's always beams of light. Um, and I, I, it's very strong in in this scene. That, yeah, and it, it, it and it's I was saying it's kind of like a play, but it is very much like what construction sites look like. Not yeah. not necessarily the the fog, but but that intense bright light, um, a little bluish to show you that it's nighttime. But this scene is is a great start to the movie. It doesn't. It shows you know you're starting right off with a death. You are not get, you're not spoiling anything about. A dinosaur. All you see is its eye, but Do you're you you're on the that? park. It doesn't. The, doesn't the title spoil? Well, <laughs> no, no. But you don't know what kind. Oh, you okay, haven't okay. seen a dinosaur oh, okay. on screen sure. first because I think this movie was the first time anyone ever really saw a dinosaur. But also, this scene kicks off the whole movie, and not not. This is the beginning of the plot. Very first scene. This guy getting eaten during this scene is why the lawyer is called in. 
is why... Why it's not going to work. Well, but but it's why the lawyer is called in, and the reason the lawyer is called in, and then that makes the investor start to question it. So then, to, to secure the park, they have to bring in the main characters. And this whole movie would mm. not happen if this if thing this, had not happened. See, that's a good point, because I sort of saw the death as just, like, this setup to be... to say bad shit's gonna happen. Well... But but it also, set like you said, sets up a ton of plot points. I mean, the other way they could do it is just have them visit for no reason. I think some of the other Jurassic Park movies will be guilty of this. <laughs> they, the other way they could do it is to just have it be a legal formality where, like, well, we have to, of course, get permission to the park. But, by, but they're showing instead of telling why this might not yeah, be the best yeah. thing, even though they've clearly spent a lot of money... They have a lot of employees. That doesn't mean the park is safe. Um, and what's this part like in the book? Is it pretty much the same? Well, they're mostly talking about it in the past tense, um, about this, like, thing that happened. Oh, the okay. The, 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 the engine incident. Like, that, um... And I really... I think that the guy didn't get fully eaten. It was, like, someone... They just sort of describe him in the emergency room. Yeah. Because oh. the, the people claimed that he, like, fell into some machinery and, and got, oh, and got chopped, okay. up, chopped up. And the, the person in the ER is just like, this looks like a mauling, if I've ever seen one. Mm. Oh, yeah. so, That's interesting. I need to read the book. <laughs> Hang on. Off to the jungle. And I will say that the, the very last part of that scene is a really cheesy fade which I feel like you don't see a lot of that in <laughs> movies lately. Maybe After the, the shoe time. Right, and then there's a picture it, uh, to the, is it the wa- the water? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think I, maybe the gatekeeper was um, Dinosaur Dundee's <laughs> boyfriend. <laughs> oh, and That's crap. why he oh, is crap. so upset that his dinosaur boyfriend, his, his boyfriend's arm is being pulled out of his hand He's got his watch on. He's like, I gave him that watch for our, for our, uh, well, let's, let's face it. They probably hooked up when they were, when they were stationed here. So maybe like, that was like a th- few months and, uh, and he just doesn't know how to express it, but except by yelling, shoot her. But at least he didn't yell, no! <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, you're right. Any yelling in general like, drives me crazy. Like, or, or like. But he's yelling at people to do something. So that's okay, but I hate, like, random outbursts, like when someone dies and they just, like, scream or something. Yeah. I, uh, drives me crazy. Wait. But I, my gaydar did not go off on the hunter because I think the only time you can wear cutoffs and it's not gay is if you are an Australian hunter. But what if... So there's no gay Australian hunters? <laughs> what, so does, it, does this make you like him more? Because I used to think he was pretty callous, but let's we should really think about this. He is yelling at these guys to kill a... This, like, amazing Yeah, this creation. This dinosaur historical, is worth yeah. millions. Yes. And he's saying kill it for the chance of this Ooh, guy living, because this guy's had a dinosaur gnawing on him for a while down there. That's true. <laughs> you think, you think, what kind of life is that going to be? Survive. <laughs> you think if they wanted you to not like him, they would have made him more unlikable in the scene. But at least in this scene, he does come off pretty. Yeah, I think maybe you likeable. think he's a little bit uh, cocky later. But in this scene, he seems to have much. He seems to have the fear of God in him, and by sure. God I mean these dinosaurs. He doesn't yeah. seem like like he doesn't seem the most the most. I mean, we're going to meet a lot more cocky characters than this dude. I think it makes me like him more. Yeah. All right. So fade. So we fade out. We fade to the water, and we see the the great stance and clothing <laughs> reflection, and we pan up to see our hero, <laughs> and he's. He's the lawyer. Is he only in this scene? Uh, no. He, he's, God, he's, I, he's a I character. I haven't seen this whole movie in a long time. Um, so I have to say that, st- going to start off with the fashion, 90 suits are so yeah. bad. It's very similar to the suit that uh, Jim Carrey's wearing in Liar Liar. Oh. And, and all, <laughs> the, all the suits in The X-Files oh, yeah. are the same. And one uh-huh. of my, like... Pet peeves about '90s fashion is the ties, the '90s ties. They're mm-hmm. super wide at oh, the bottom, yeah. and they go up to this tiny little knot. It looks so bad. Mm. The '90s suits are horrible. And yeah, this guy's got it pretty, 
pretty bad one. Yeah. He's not supposed to be cool. I was joking. His body language is so uncomfortable as these guys pull him across well, a river on a little boat. I think it's an I think it's another archetype, right? Like yes. the is, the yeah. bumbling lawyer, like he's all the city folk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, he's he's not <laughs> Um oh wait, hold on one second. I'm gonna turn this this way, because you're a little bit further. Uh, and quieter, okay. and I'm pretty loud, so um so what I was confused about is they're they're at a mine, right? Yep. Why is the lawyer going there? Yeah, it's kind of, that's kind of weird. It's unclear. Because if it's, if it's about this incident that happened and it's about, like, an inspection that needs to take place or something, mm-hmm. then I didn't understand why he was going to the mine and why he was meeting that guy. I, I, it kind of didn't make sense because he goes to talk to that guy. I think maybe they're going to get Dr. Grant's information, but... Later on, the lawyer isn't even the guy who brought Dr. Grant. The lawyer should have been going to see Ian Malcolm. I think they just wanted to save the reveal of, of Father Christmas. They didn't want him to, to be seen. Well, no, no, that's true. He'd be the one that would be going. No, because his entrance wanted, is perfect. I think they kind of wanted to, like, like give you some curiosity about, like, why this mine exists. Like, that's, why... Okay. That's what I was thinking. This is, like, I know what happens in this movie... But it's very strange that and all of a sudden they're in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, there are some some hunky miners in this mine here. <laughs> again, too and many I don't, extras. Yeah. Oh, and again, I, and yeah, and I don't I don't mean kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um. And they do say uh, just in the little text at the bottom when they when they get there that it is an amber mine. So, yeah. So you know what they're mining for. Does but. it say um, Isla Nublar it's, again? This place is like the Manos de Dios Amber Mine. The and hands of the gods? Yeah, that's what it said. These are their words, not mine. It's in the Dominican Republic, though. I also am curious ab- about which locations are real places and which are not. Um, uh, because I don't. Isla Nublar is. It's not a real Completely place. Completely fictional. Wait, you haven't been to the Manos de, Mi- de Dios <laughs> mine? I, I so haven't. I haven't. <laughs> I, I, I need to go hang out with all the hunky miners. They're though. they're gorgeous. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and the mines aren't bad either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so I'd, like, I'd be curious to see yeah. if that's a real so we, place as well. We should pull up a map in the future. So uh, this, this sweaty guy that you're introduced to reminds me a lot of... It's reminded me so much of the beginning of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, he reminds me of the... Of the Toss me the idol, I'll throw you the whip. And, uh, you know, that's also Spiel- Spielberg. This is just being very similar to me. So they're having this conversation. Yeah. Uh, he calls uh, Dr. Grant the D-word. Which oh, is, the digger. Yeah, he calls him a digger. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Wait, who? Which, which one calls him that? Oh, uh, the, the guy holding the amber. He's looking at it, and he says, he'll, he'll never come. He's a digger like me. Um. Oh, that's what he was referencing. This is a great. Gotcha. This is a great. I like how dismiss, dismissive it. He's telling him about all this stuff, but he will not stop mining even for a few minutes. He's like, <laughs> gets off the boat and he's like, "Let's walk. I'm working. I got to go down to the end because because there's probably something to look at." And this mine is like ten feet long. <laughs> Everyone's digging sideways, but but curiously, that doesn't seem to be where the mine goes. Which yeah. I don't think is how <laughs> mines are made. It did, well, it also <laughs> didn't. It, it didn't take them that long to find the like prized object then. No, they were just finishing it up with a power saw and well, one thing, what do you think I've ever been listening to? So he mentions that John Hammond doesn't want to be involved with this lawyer investigation because his daughter is getting divorced. I thought he was talking about someone else. Oh, oh wait, yeah, no. Detail. Yeah, actually, wait. I just put that together. That's true. Um, they do say that in the book too. He says that his, oh, that's yeah, he, anyway, that's in the book too. They are getting a divorce, but that is a weird thing to put Who's into his the, daughter? Is she's a, she they're not in the movie, movie but, oh, okay. but her I'm kids. I'm like, is that the blonde one? I I but, don't but know her what the kids hell's going on. Play a role of a you know. oh. <laughs> so okay, putting the pieces together. <laughs> right. Okay, I gotcha. I wonder if that lawyer is representing either his daughter or maybe uh, maybe her her ex husband in the divorce. <laughs> yeah, something weird. Um, <laughs> Well, I got nothing else for for this. Uh, I was just going to see say well, that there's a bunch more Steven Spielberg flashlight lighting. Oh yeah, all the beams of light again. Um, I I was interested in how um, uh, religious they made that piece of amber mm. look. It was almost like this weirdly 
religious moment. They zoom right in on it. Well, that's, again, like like Raiders of the Lost Ark or The Last Crusade. It's more like that same kind of lighting and reverence. But they zoom right into that, and then we're zoomed in right away to the next scene and dinosaur bones. I will right. just say... Do you have a yeah, note for this? Well, kind of, and it goes into the next one, too. It's just like, where did they get all of these extra people to be in every scene? Because there's, there's always, like, the, the three focal... <laughs> Characters and then like twenty or thirty extras. I have some things to talk about (laughs) these extra people in a minute, but first in the in the next scene, I think this must have ruined paleontologists. I bet paleontologists. Well, I wonder if paleontologists loved this movie or hated this movie. So you know, a lot of people wanted to become crime scene investigators after that CSI show came out Mm -hmm. because it's so cool. And then when you see ten sets of hands, just. Fucking doing whatever. <laughs> They're brushing their teeth. That, that one's picking its nose. Picking its nose. That was great. <laughs> and this dinosaur is intact. Just yeah, just like, there. That's yeah. not how dinosaurs I know. are. Found. It's like way too perfect. And like it's it's like a almost two dimensional. Like its right. skull is flat. No, uh, well, like, it's, like, it's it, kind of only barely uncovered, but it would die, like, it's completely horizontal. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, 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 oh, yeah, this will be easy. They, they don't have to construct this one at all, but nobody seems that impressed. This would be the best dinosaur Fine. ever. Yeah. And, uh, and everyone's, you know, everyone's working on it, but, but they're rough, and, like, they're already down to the bone. At that point, you're, you're just, like, tiny, tiny, yeah. tiny little face. This is, like, how you'd be brushing if you couldn't see it yet. Right. Um, yeah, the, the extras, um... Sorry, i covering it. I'm covering the dinosaur. So, are we to assume, again, too many extras, are we Wait, to assume... Oh, uh, are we to assume that all of the extras in this scene, are they research assistants? Are they college yeah, students? I no it's, it's, a, a field it's a trip. field trip, right, yeah. <laughs> But yeah. there's no vehicles, and there's only quarters for two people. So, so, well, so, so let's go. We, we go in, they're building this, and then they set off some dynamite to show off this new technology. We got a lot of character building. Alan, great, Hans. He hates, hates computers. He hates computers. He doesn't get along with this 1990s television set at all. <laughs> at all. With the cardboard around it and all of its <laughs> technological wonders. Um... I loved, back to the extras, I was really obsessed with the extras in the scene. I love when it cuts to them staring, all staring at the computer, and they're, like, all, like, in the background, almost like it's, they're this hip, like, catalog <laughs> photo. Like, they felt very posed. Again, the fashion. Yeah. It was, like, the, I want to, I want to talk to the fashion designer for this, um, well, they costume very designer. Touristy. They, to me, well, they looked like the costume designer had this very uh, stereotypical idea of what America was. archaeologists wear <laughs> out on the field, and he dressed every single one of them like that. <laughs> uh, so much plaid. Yeah. Oh, do we know what country we're in? They're we in Montana. Part? Okay, we're in, I was thinking Utah or Montana. Yeah. No, bad, the Badlands are a real yes. place where a lot of... Dinosaur fossils. This, dinosaur this National is, Park is in the area. This yep. is in Montana, though. They said it in the movie and in the book. Okay. Yeah. So. So, so, they're, so they run around to this television, and they start to... The radar starts to uncover this dinosaur using new technology, which is going to replace digging somehow. And it does a pretty good job of revealing this dinosaur, but I don't understand why they needed that, as that dinosaur was already completely uncovered from that exact angle. What are they looking at? I don't think I don't think the whole thing was uncovered. Right, but but the picture they have is from above ground. Right. And and this dinosaur you could already see all of its bones and then instead of being by the bones they gather around the TV and then point out features of a dinosaur to each other. Wait. Then he says something about a bird. Laughter comes in, and we cut to the studio audience who is standing behind him. <laughs> it must be a field trip, then. Well, yeah, because there's no other explanation they have for no that idea. kid. Right, right. Like, who brings their 10-year-old Which, like, kid? The reveal of this kid. Yes, the, gr- the extras, Amazing. like, parting a pu- yeah. He says something, and it's like it's like a bar fight is going to happen. He'll be like, <laughs> yes. he'll be like, dinosaurs can't fly, and then it's like, ooh, and everyone yes, backs away, yes, and, then yes. the, and then it's just Dr. Grant and this kid, and you think he's just going to run over <laughs> and, him. Uh, but back to the uh, the technology involved and whether or not it made sense why they even did that. This movie has a very 
um, anti-technology hmm. theme to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the main character, who's the good guy, who doesn't think we should be resurrecting dinosaurs, also hates computers. So he sort of represents Well, this. he likes old things. Like dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> right, and he hates new things he like... He hates mammals. He's like, what are, what's all this? Ah. Hair. <laughs> Birds are flying around instead of being fossilized underground like the old days. So I think so I think that that sets up that sort of anti-technology. Is that a theme in the book? Um, Is there an undercurrent of Michael Crichton? Well, I don't think there's necessarily like a hatred of technology, but there definitely is more of like a. Uh, it's like I would compare it more to like like how Frankenstein is written. Okay. Like, you don't want to be playing God. You can play right. with computers as much as you want, but... But don't resurrect dinosaurs. Yeah, or... Clone or dinosaurs. Um, like, yeah. Um, well, so... He poses this bird idea, which is now pretty accepted. I was no, surprised I, it was in this movie when I went back and watched it. How... I don't know a lot about dinosaurs. I thought that the dinosaurs are like birds theory has to be older than the 90s. Mm. I think he was getting a lot of momentum around the time of this this mo- there was book a, coming out and stuff. This this movie came out at a great time because it was around the time where people were starting to accept that dinosaurs moved like how they move in this movie. Before that, people thought that dinosaurs were not uh, horizontal; they were they were vertical and they walked kind of like Godzilla, really heavy and lumbering. Right. Okay, and they weren't considering them to be uh, like birds. They assumed they were like. Lizards oh. that were taller. Okay. And they thought they'd move more like lizards. So so it is, that's I think one of the reasons why the models, the dinosaurs in this movie are so great is because they do move like that. In the old times, even, like, even when they had the claymation stuff, no matter how good the claymation was, they wouldn't have chosen to make dinosaurs move like that. Yeah. And uh, in some of the stuff I was looking at, uh, one thing I thought was kind of interesting, there's some debate about dinosaurs having feathers. Mm-hmm. Um, the the research that came out for the Velociraptors, what they're digging up, sort of in this movie, um, that they found that def- defining that um, that Velociraptors would have feathers wasn't found until two thousand seven. Okay. So that's pretty recent. Uh, yeah, like, it, it was. It it's was, generally whoa. accepted that Velociraptors probably did have feathers. Yeah, but they they discovered that they have quill knobs. Uh-huh. Which is like these little indentations that. Did you say 2007? Yes. The that, dinosaurs in Jurassic Park 3 had feathers. And so, was no, it was, a, it was a theory. Oh, like, okay. But the, they, found, they found those little indentations in some fossil specimens. Yeah, that's and like that's, proof. that's like definite. Like, um, some skeletons can not, or can have feathers and not have those indentations, but nothing that has those indentations. Don't have feathers. Yeah, that doesn't make feathers. sense. Why would God create dinosaurs with God? feathers? Where, where is this podcast going? <laughs> what, it, what? Never mind. But So they got to this kid with the 90s shirt. The nine, I, yeah. I wrote down 90s shirt kid. Yeah. And yeah. as soon as he calls this kid out, I think part of the thing was, you know, they wanted that showdown effect. He, but also, whoever that kid's parents were, they take no responsibility for this kid. They're like, they're like, oh man, finally someone's going to give our ki- our kid a good talking well, to. Well, Doctor Grant was a dick to him. This kid, nah, he he deserved it. Uh, but he was like really scaring this kid. Well, he takes out his little claw and but shows we- him how a dinosaur. This is also great. He explains that dinosaurs can't. That T Rexes can. Their vision is based on movement. And he talks about the way that Velociraptors hunt, and both of those will come up again, but by the time yes. they come up, you're supposed to feel like, I know stuff about dinosaurs. A paleontologist told me earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Subcon- this is really great, bet, because you didn't Subconsciously. Want- yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is a great way of delivering exposition. I, it's always tricky to put exposition into a movie, but this is a pretty seamless way of putting this, this exposition, this piece. Later on, we'll get to another one that's not so much, but... But for this, you know, you've got, they're telling you a bunch of information. He's telling a little kid that you're hearing it as the audience. And later on, when, when these different things are happening, they don't have to tell you, oh, their vision's based on movement. You right. know, you, you already know. You already that's know. that's yeah. great. I, that's, I think it's a really is effective, that, efficient way. Is that it. a fact? I don't know how they would know that. Like, 
whether or not their vision was based on movement, unless they're model- modeling it off of, like, some bird species. I wouldn't well, know how they would know how velociraptors hunted, either. I mean, as, may, I assume maybe they just the patterns that they're finding the skeletons, like, if they find them in packs, mm-hmm. maybe it's assumed... But or it is like, all... Th- well, I, yeah, no, I think the reason they think that about velociraptors is because there's tar pits with lots of them around the same carcass, if, and that uh, assumes that they were all attacking at the same time. Yeah, and I mean, they can find the remains of, of what things were eating, too, sometimes. As like, far as the find- vision goes, I got no idea. Next time, pick a guest that is a scientist. Oh, Francis, I, Francis, <laughs> Francis. Yeah, oh, science. yeah, but a <laughs> dinosaur scientist. <laughs> Are you dinosaur scientists? No, no, they're extinct. Dinosaur hobbyists? <laughs> I'm a dinosaur doctor. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, he's dead. There was nothing we could do. <laughs> Is what I say every day. <laughs> um, time of death was 65 million years ago. Um, so, then this, uh, we're going to call this the next scene. The helicopter comes, comes in. Uh, well, okay, so Dr. Grant and the girl, what's her name? Uh, Ellie Sattler. Ellie Sattler, with the coolest 90s. I think her she got away with the best 90s look. I had a 90s she, look that could come back. Her, her she, pink shirt it's and already, haircut. It's and already that, back. that flipped up hat. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. In in this scene, she's wearing all denim. Yeah. All denim. All denim. Oh. Yeah. What well, happens nice takes place between this scene where they're standing around the thing and the next scene where they're walking over a hill? She's still wearing no, the denim. No, she's wearing the denim. She switches into the... I'm the fashion guest. I'm, okay. the, I'm the guest that just talks about the Jurassic Park fashion. No, I think she switches into the outfit you're thinking of um, it, when they're flying to the island. Oh. And then I think that's the outfit she wears for most of the movie, because most of the movie takes place... Yeah, she doesn't get to change again. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of time to change. There's not much time to eat or go to the bathroom. And if you do go to the bathroom... Um, <laughs> You're gonna get eaten. Yeah, <laughs> we're skipping ahead. Spoilers. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, I, I feel so embarrassed that I said that. So, she's wearing a big shirt. So her denim is not. It's not gonna fly. N- nice high waisted mom jeans and a denim. So top. Dr. Grant hates kids. Now is this, relationship, a, is this a good time to bust open what is the entire theme of Jurassic Park? Was it you who was telling me this? I don't remember. Nugget of information that the entire plot of Jurassic Park. Oh, I might blow your minds. This might have been another... Po- I'm copying. This might have been another podcast I was listening oh, to. Oh, no. The entire plot of Jurassic Park is just a really, really complex um, story of a middle-aged man getting over his fear of having children. Oh. Like, that... that <laughs> who did? Who told me that? Well, that's his character art. Strangely, because because he doesn't have any other character arcs, and he's the yeah. and, he, and, and he's the arguably the main character, yeah. and the like you find out that that's what the whole thing, that's what this experience does for him, is yeah. it, it 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 makes him be comfortable with becoming a parent. So yeah. that's a really it's like the most action packed, over the top. Huh character study on just an old man, like an old grumpy middle-aged man who doesn't want to have kids. That's, I had it in there, grumpier younger men. There's, that's true, there's like one part in the book where he's talking about how, how children, he likes, he likes that children are always really fascinated with dinosaurs, like they're always the most excited at the zoos, and, or at, not, not zoos, but like the museums and stuff, and he thinks it's because they're like parents, that they're like bigger than them, and they're scary, and they're more powerful. It was it was really weird. The this way was in de- the book. Yeah, the way that you described kids equating dinosaurs to their parents. Do we know when <laughs> Steven Spielberg had kids? Do you think this might have something to do with him? Because if I remember correctly in the book, <laughs> Sam Neill actually, or Sam Neill's not in the book, his character, <laughs> Alan Grant, kind of likes kids, like yeah. you're saying, but John Hammond is the one that hates kids. In the book. Yeah. Okay. So I think that might be, but you know... A couple of these characters have very minor arcs, and the rest all die. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, you make a good point. There, are, there isn't a lot of emotional freight in this movie. Um, I guess you get attached to the kids, kind of. I don't, re- like, I don't remember feeling any. I don't like, I don't like kids. They're they're smelly. <laughs> yeah. Some of them smell. Babies are smelly. Babies. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, we're jumping ahead. Let's, yeah, let's move on from uh from the yeah. Um, I think that wraps up the Badlands field trip. 
Almost. Well, yes. Okay. So the Badlands field trip's over. Let's let's do a let's let's do a break here just in case we end the episode <laughs> and I have to do another episode. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, um actually, <laughs> let's yeah. Let's just do it. Okay. So they get in that RV. Well, I was gonna. I was, oh, it's just like I, like so. Let's just let's just end that episode. Oh, okay, uh, that's the end. Yeah. Oh, so, 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 like, we're like, so we're like, we were talking about that, and then I'm be like, all right, so they're, all right, so they're talking. They hate kids. They're about to have a conversation. This is the kind of conversation couples probably hate to have because they're about serious. Are they a couple? I don't know. I was going to ask that. Are they a couple? They but say before this they... whole experience. Yeah, it's like vague in the movie and the book, but you know what? They should be. Well, that and and, and again, and my my theory, which isn't my theory because I copied it from somewhere that I don't remember, hmm. that scene of them walking up the the hill where he says he hates kids, that's like the start of the the main plot of the movie, so they, or the main emotional plot. I don't know what you would call that. The character driven plot. The hmm. plot, I guess, is more about the guy stealing the. Ah, spoilers. Oh, spoilers, sorry for those... Well, anyway, like whenever you're having a conversation with your significant research partner, then (laughs) it's always great when a helicopter flies in and you have to cut it short. And that's the end of the episode. Um, uh, We have nothing really to say. I'm... I'm (laughs) (laughs) Uh, How do you join these things? uh, Join us for our next episode, whenever that is. I'm Nathan. I'm Brienne. And I'm Hunter. And Hunter will be back uh, jo- this <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> for uh, <laughs> next week on Jurassic Parts, a, a podcast 65 million and 20 years in the making. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, let's do another. Um, all right. So welcome back to Jurassic Parts. Bite-sized parts of of that Jurassic movie. Um, if we took a break, and if we didn't, we'll just edit all this out. <laughs> okay, so a helicopter just landed. Helicopter lands. So they weren't expecting a helicopter. Is no. that they were like, oh my god, cover up the fossil. Right, and you can see this in the background when they're walking. Am I right? This, for me, this, I don't remember disliking... Dr. Hammond, but just the fact that he flies in on a helicopter without giving a fuck, excuse me, without giving and, a crap if you want to edit the, that is, word out, like, <laughs> like that's a lot of arrogance and And wasted rudeness. money if he's, he's, if, no he's, expense. if he's the one financing this whole dig, like... <laughs> you think you, I don't know. I don't think, think he, he's the, he's a big picture guy, you know? He wants to be flashy. He's he's like the guy that wants the website to look great, but he doesn't care about the code. He doesn't care about how you dig up dinosaur fossils. Okay, okay, I he's, can get that. He's he's coming in. So he's dressed like like well, he is Santa Claus, but he's dressed like Panama Jack. They <laughs> come in. So I have I have an issue with this. They run up. The helicopter is just landing. Sam oh, yeah. runs up and he's yelling at the helicopter pilot. The helicopter pilot's saying. No, I'm not turning it off. Just go inside. He's pointing over there. Um, they get in, and John Hammond is opening up a bottle of champagne. Did that motherfucker just <laughs> bolt out of the helicopter and run straight into this trailer for the fridge? Oh. Because how on earth could this old man get to that room that, quicker than they were able to get before it landed? That timing was really confusing to me, but I just assumed that I missed something. <laughs> Yeah, the editor yeah. missed something. He, he <laughs> there must does, have another conversation happening. He does walk really slow. He even has, like, a cane. He's got a cane. Well, and he does have, sometimes he just has a limp and no cane. Yeah. Well, uh, I thought maybe they they were walking away. No, that doesn't make any sense. I thought maybe they were walking away, so they missed... A, there was a lot of... It took time for them to get from where they were back to where the helicopter was, and I thought maybe... And Dr. it was just Hammond, on that whole time? Yeah. Maybe, and he just, and he got out and just strolled into that That's still that kind place. of, that's still a little iffy, that's a little... So they're uh, yelling at everybody, yeah. cover up this dinosaur because the sand is going to destroy it. The bones... Obviously. The bones might <laughs> blow away. Oh, I think, I think he's right. You know, I think what also would destroy bones is just 
shoving your finger into its nose to make sure you get out every little fossilized dinosaur booger. <laughs> but yeah, what kind of a field trip <laughs> lets the kids just like? What if they're like college interns and one of them brought their kid because they weren't supposed to, but they did anyway? Maybe it's the teacher's kid. Maybe. Or it's a really freakishly smart college intern. That little kid? Yeah. The one who's like, hey, dinosaur's chicken. Four foot chicken. A kid's an <laughs> asshole. I did, wasn't, back to that kid, wasn't he in something else? He looked He really looked familiar. really familiar. Hmm. He's got, a, you know, he, he's got just a terrible look to him. He does. Well, he has that, like, asshole kid look to him. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, okay. The kid so that, like, smarmy. changes all the rules when you're playing games and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I you're didn't, supposed to that, eat him. That kid called me a faggot in <laughs> elementary school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know you're about that age. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Dr. Hammond mysteriously manifests in the, in the trailer, <laughs> which is, they, they don't live in it. They do. No, it's they so do. dirty. I don't know what they're it's, doing. I, think I also so. don't know. What well, there's there's tents around. Maybe it's just their living area. That, that place, that, or their their kitchen. Like there's clutter everywhere. Yeah, it's a yeah. So my favorite subplot for this scene, if I could get into it, is the uh, the champagne scene. So when you get in there, he's got the champagne out and he opens it immediately. Yeah. Like he pulls it out of the fridge and pops the cork right through. So he, you there's know, no foil or anything. No, he's ready to go, and then. And then as they act out this scene, there's this other there's this other plot that's about him pouring champagne. And so he opens it and then and then in the middle of talking, he's like, We gotta drink this or it's gonna get warm. And then uh, the girl comes over and tr- tries to get a dish and he says, I know my way around a kitchen. Then for the next five minutes he's cleaning uh, cups. using a yeah. rag to clean out this one cup. And then, there's three cups, he pours all three, and as they clink with champagne at the end of this scene, not to jump ahead, in the background, you can see a bunch of wine glasses just sitting there, even though they're drinking out of, like, water Oh, I love that, glass. I love that, I didn't, I didn't catch the wine glasses. In the background, there's wine or champagne glasses just, in, there's like a Already stack clean. of them, and I, they must have had them on set, and then, and then they were like, it'd be re- well, really better if he was just cleaning up uh, with a dusty Give him rag. something to do. Yeah. I also acting back to back to the the meta subplots of the same scene. I want to know what Doctor Grant was saving the champagne for. Oh, for the discovering the dinosaur, probably. I guess. Okay, Another that's one? not that's not as juicy. I was I yeah. I, I was imagining. Well, something. maybe he was going to pop the question to the female researcher, right? His <laughs> significant researcher. <laughs> he was saying, "Do you want to publish a paper with me?" <laughs> we could be co-authors together And then she's like Well could we have a kid on the paper And he's like I don't want like kids and they're like Well this isn't gonna work Yeah So uh, yeah. Oh but wait Sorry Back to archetypes again The the all white outfit And the hat Is that One I'm missing too You said Panama Jack Yeah I'm not familiar with He's the guy on those sunglasses They sell at Walgreens <laughs> But even he has to be like repre- I'm really into archetypes, yeah. so I'm trying to like uh, get back, like trace it back to what that outfit means. It looks like like rich old guy vacation outfit. I don't yeah. know, like I don't know. And I know we you can edit this part out too if you don't want to talk about the new movie, but the the sexy. A scientist in the newest Jurassic Park that hasn't been Chris released. <laughs> I, I, I do like Chris Pratt, but no, the he she's wearing all white too. So it's like they're already making this really obvious comparison that she's the new oh Doctor Hammond. Hammond. Yeah, because he died. Oh yeah, the old one, the actor. Yeah, yeah, I think he died last year. That's sad. Let's anyway. take a moment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, I'll, I'm going to look up all these archetypes later, then. Okay. Well, I guess Dr. Grant's the reluctant hero, but, man, when he hears about the research money, he's he's all aboard. Yeah, the, this is another, like, character point for Dr. Hammond that makes him seem like a horrible person. He blackmails them. No, he bribes them. Oh, oh, bribes I, them. oh I misread it. I thought he was saying, like, if you don't come, no, like, didn't. I'm going to pull the plug. No. Well, he, he had said, paid them before, and he said he would fund them for three more years. 
And so I guess that might have been an implication. Why is this guy paying so much money for fossils? For fossils when he has the same dinosaurs alive in his park? Not yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Just for bribery, I guess. Um, I know this so is a super cut, but John Hammond. This is the first time he says "spared no expense." Yeah, and I okay. know he says that a lot in this movie. <laughs> yeah, but let's keep a let's keep a tally. Yeah. So he's he he bribes them. Yeah. And he, I need to clarify, like get straight why he needs them. Is it for the investors? So that there, he's like, I need two really really smart paleontologists to. Yeah. Tell the investors that everything's fine. Like, it's yes. safe. It's not going to be... Yeah. Is Which that doesn't in... really make... I mean, I guess they're, they're, they're... I think you're supposed to think that they're experts in their field. They're doctors, and they'll say, oh, no, no, dinosaurs aren't dangerous. <laughs> I was just picking one's nose the other day, and it seemed very <laughs> <emotional>. <laughs> and, it and it didn't snap at me. <laughs> uh, it does... It does. It is kind of peculiar why he would choose them, because... Uh, I mean, I guess he wasn't there for Dr. Grant's horrific speech out in the out in the plot with, you know, I haven't seen a, a kid talk to you that way since Willy Wonka. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this Very is kind true. of a, a field true. trip. Like, you know, every time someone questions him, he he'll take them to task. Yeah, yeah. And turns into a blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can see that in the background of the next scene with that blueberry kid just rolling down the hill. All right, I think um, we're done talking about that scene. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, all right. So, do you remember what the what the cut was between these two scenes? Oh, crap! I was doing really good about all the transitions. They no. do a clink of their glass, but, and we are in Costa Rica. Costa Rica. And you've got the the, the guy Spanish from, music playing, and the guy oh, yeah. from Seinfeld, Newman. Newman. That's right. <laughs> then uh, Agent Exposition. I mean, uh, Dodson comes in and. Uh, Explains the rest of this movie to you. <laughs> is is, is Dodson even in it again? No, no, he's not. Is so he, he a bigger character in the book? Eh, he's he's basically there for that scene. Okay. He's, he's from like a competing biotechnology company. That is, sure, okay. That's yeah. trying to like steal the yeah. They stuff. they have a, gave him a checklist of things he needs to explain to you, and he goes through them. Viable embryo, seven hundred fifty thousand. Um, 18 minute window, 18 minute window, 18 minute window. That's Make, a random number. Yeah. Why would he, why would they be talking about this? This is one of those scenes that are, you know, all movies are guilty of, but when two people know about something, why you would just explicitly say it? It's like, like it's not a contract, but you're like, Hey, I got the 50, I got the 750,000 plus 50,000 more for each viable embryo off the island. You have to get those viable embryos off the island. Your company's going to catch up on so much research. Ten you know? years. Yeah. I think that... I actually think that... Um, uh. Screenwriters and directors... Um, hopefully, are beginning to put more faith in their audience. Mm -hmm. And I think that older movies have little to no faith in their audience... And they just have to spell out exactly what's going on. Because if, if if not as much was said and that bag was handed over, you it you easily assume that there's a bunch of money in there. Well, so I don't think they needed to be as um, explicit about this obvious wasn't, details. This is some clunky exposition because it's two characters yeah. that should know what they're talking about. Telling right. it to each other. Right. I thought that other scene was really great because mm -hmm. it was him explaining it to a kid. Yeah. And probably the general audience would not know what they're talking about. So it's, so it's, that's, you know, your entryway character. He, there is a reason for someone to be saying it. This one, he should just be handing this briefcase off. He shouldn't be telling him what it's for again. Right. He should, <laughs> but Newman should know what to do before he gets $750,000. That should, that should that's, a, been a, that's a very good point. That yeah. should have been in an email somewhere. It's like, wait, oh, embryos. They didn't have email. Yeah, I was going to say, were they emailing at this point? It's like hey, when you they, to pay for your he account. Is, they can clone dinosaurs, but they they no, can't send emails. Newman is on the email, I guarantee you. He, he hacks he hacks the whole system. Yeah, he's a hacker. So, yeah. well, they I mean, say that at some point. He's actually the, the, only, the only person that understands what computers are, I think, except for Samuel L. Jackson. Hold on to your butts. Mm -hmm. um, so... 
I didn't have a whole lot. To I love say that shaving cream scene. thing. Yeah, they they definitely set up his character as the the comic the, relief. Yeah, the bumbling idiot. Um, the shaving cream thing I love because it's it's so pre nine eleven. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that's like a little. What would they stamp. even think? If you, like, they put it through the x-ray machine, and they're like, ah, oh, little embryos in that see, And I'm thinking, uh, I guess customs would have been harder, but, like, before 9-11, I don't think you'd even need something as in- intricate as a fake shaving cream can. Although that does keep I mean, them cold. I mean, they I remember they would x-ray my Game Boy all the time back in the yeah. 90s, so. But I don't know. Um, when you, I wanted to talk, because you said this is a really obvious scene. When I was a kid and I saw this movie, I don't think I even understood this whole Oh, plot. no, I'm sure. I, I was waiting for the dinosaurs. Yeah. Like, all these scenes are merc- mercifully short, and uh, and they don't, like, I don't think, even with explaining it that much, I think you have a point. They could have explained it less, because the people that weren't going to understand it won't understand it anyway. And this, this, Jurassic Park is not one of those movies that... It has a very intricate plot with a ton of twists and uh, reveals. Yeah. And, uh, it's it's a very easy plot because it's 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 more about the action and the CGI dinosaurs. But it's amazing because it's got puppets. Well, it just generally is about Jurassic Park. It's got puppets. It's got it does have action. It has humor. It's kind of a horror movie in other ways. It's it's a thing that Steven Spielberg did very well up until a certain point that I don't really feel like anyone does now. I can't think of anything. No, I this think balance. I think this is a very very quintessentially '90s movie. There's shades of Jaws in it. Yeah, um, I, That's I, I true. would say, but but this I, is such a, like a bigger spectacle than Jaws. I really really like the the slow reveal. It makes the dinosaurs like so much cooler to see. The fact that you don't see them mm. for the first part of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a really good reveal. But the Boy, plot is again. going. That yeah. first scene kicked it off. The next scene led us to the next part and let us give us a little more information. I probably think that second scene could have been cut. The one about with the one with the lawyer and the digger, or the the, the amber digger. Because right. when they talk or, about it later, they do explain it, and you're not going to be like, well, what, what mine did that come out of? Well, I have to admit, I the only reason I knew what amber was. Uh-huh. Uh, was from seeing this movie as a kid. You know, like, yeah. I had no idea what that was before. I remember there was a really sticky tree in my front yard, and I thought I could make dinosaurs with it someday. It's fossilized uh, sap. Yeah, right? well, yeah. <laughs> Do, should we get into the, the pseudoscience of this at all? Uh, <laughs> how how plausible? I was, I was saying there these huge chunks of amber, when you did find one, there'd be no guarantee that that was a dinosaur's blood in there at all. Well, I, I, I would assume that they would have had a geologist survey the area and know that this portion of this mine, yeah. this amber was created during this period of time. True. Which also They're is, polishing it, you know. But they it's would, all polished by the time you see it. They would also, it, that also doesn't make sense because all the different type, the different species of dinosaurs that are in this movie span millions of years. So they would not only need, they need amber from a lot of different time periods. Well, I think they got amber from different time periods and then and they selected the dinosaurs that would be coolest, the coolest for this movie. <laughs> right, yeah, right. <laughs> yes. They're like, oh man, which ones would be cool to have in Jurassic Park? And that is something, I, I don't think they, like, shy away from that in the movie or the book, that there's all sorts of different dinosaurs. There's from, some from, like, the Jurassic and the Triassic, and a lot of, actually, I'd say most of the cool ones are from the Cretaceous. I think, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. all never coexisted So before. let's do a little ranking. What would be the best name? I think Jurassic Park is still the best, yeah. but I do feel like they should have called the third one Triassic Park instead of <laughs> Jurassic Park 3. Yeah. Cretaceous Park is awful. Yeah, but I, most of the dinosaurs are from the, the Cretaceous. Paleolithic Park. <laughs> dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, Dinosaur Zoo. Now, again, this movie came out when we were young and... Oh, did you see it in theaters? I think so. I don't... I wasn't no. allowed to, but I had the book, that not not the Michael Crichton book, but like a book that had the pictures from the dinosaur, mm-hmm. uh, for, all from the pictures the from the movie, like screenshots and stuff. So those are like the most iconic shots to me, and some of those, I was confused. There was a lot of people I thought were main characters because they had a, two pictures in the in that sure. book instead of 
only I one. I think I did go see it in theaters, but... You did? But what I'm wondering is, to me, the word Jurassic has this sort of um, intangible connotation to it in my head, in, in for me, and I'm wondering if that's just from this movie. Mm. Like, when I when I hear the word Jurassic, I... I all these very vivid images come pop into my head, but I feel like maybe that's just because of this movie. I wonder if that word had that connotation before this movie. I'm going back to, like, if it's the best name, mm. sort of. Because the, the, the choosing of ju- the Jurassic period in the title is... Uh, well, it's from the book, but I will imagine like, it's arbitrary. Oh, well, it's because it's Michael Michael Crichton's got a notepad out, and he's just like ranking these different names for the park each day. So <laughs> we we can talk about this more in an, in another part. But uh, I, I do. This is an interesting movie. I don't know how many things do this, but this movie, the title is the name of the park, and yeah, and uh, and that's what I when I heard that the new one was going to be called Jurassic World, I was like, ah, oh, it's going to be a worldwide thing now. Like, I didn't want to see something so sweeping in scope. I love that the new park is just called Jurassic World. Yeah. And it's still on an island. That's brilliant to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next one can be Jurassic Land. Um, I, <laughs> again, you, again, you can edit this out if we don't want to talk about the new movie. I was really st- stoked. The, I thought the trailer was really, really good. Up until the Chris Pratt has Velociraptor yes. sidekicks. Oh, you know what I was going to say is the line where, where Chris well, Pratt said, line, does, that like, li- depends on whatever those scientists have cooked up in that lab right. of theirs. I was like, oh dear lord. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it's a... That's a groaner and he does it so straight yeah, face. I know. But like, he should have been winking. It could, <laughs> it could go either way. It could be really, really great and it could be absolutely horrible because the last part of the trailer is Chris Pratt riding on a motorcycle with velociraptors yeah. next to him that don't seem to be hunting him. No, no, they're his teammates. Yeah, that's... I don't know what that is about. Yeah. So, we'll... Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I like that, that they they worked out all the kinks, and this this park, the new park, would be working, but that they won't stop. That's... And that's... I mean, that's a very interesting... You know what? I was wondering if this, if this movie will have any shades of blackfish involved in it, because that would be brilliant. What do you mean? Well, oh, oh, that, oh, oh that, that documentary. The yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be really smart. That would be an amazing thing to do. I don't know if they'll go there, but what, what a sh- you know what a strange thing to be like. Oh, dinosaurs are so evil. To be like these dinosaurs would be pretty much fine, except we're psychologically torturing them by making them do things and live in tiny pens. Oh, I hope that's an aspect of the plot. That's a good point. I, I think, doubt it. I think the plot <laughs> is just going to be this new crazy dinosaur that they made that's yeah. crazier than all the other dinosaurs. This one feels like it's going to be a horror movie again, though. Yeah. They, 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 they've really sold that this dinosaur is so scary that they don't even give a shit that there's Tyrannosauruses and, yeah. and Velociraptors. Yeah. The Velociraptors are basically your friend. The Tyrannosaurus is, like, probably sleeping most of the time, and uh, they're, like, the lions or whatever of the of the Jurassic Zoo. That's right. Like, yeah, sleeping uh, or something. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I like, pissing on everything. But th- this new one is so big of a deal that those other ones don't even matter anymore. I feel like, so we're talking science stuff, one hurdle that I don't think that they can ever get over, it's, like, I feel like in movies where there's science, you always have to just, like, turn off your brain for, like, one part. Sure. It's just that these animals are so big that they just, there's no way that they could survive. Like, they, when they naturally lived, they lived in a time when there was a lot more oxygen in the air. And a lot more land. Well, yeah, that's, but, like... So you're just like the amount of oxygen that you have to take in to support oh, I, that kind oh, of body is sure. a lot is a lot lot higher than what we have. So these dinosaurs would be moving around so slow. They'd be like us if we were on top of Everest. Oh they, they, like, wow! A, a I've never even thought actually. about that. I don't think so. Cause, like, but they are in the best like, place. They're, like, near sea level. Like, well, it is, like, the best place for them. I mean, it's not just dinosaurs. Like, like the Earth goes through, like, different periods and stuff. There's, like, the... Carboniferous time. That's right. when like bugs were getting huge. There'd be right. like beetles the size of like, you beetles. know, like, <laughs> not the, that the big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or like I know they they found some like fossils or, or remains of like dragonflies that were you know like four feet long, stuff like that. Those but, are just regular dragons. But we but yeah, it was just like Earth can't 
support that kind of life now. And that's just, like, the thing that I don't think that plot-wise they can ever do. Unless, like, they're all walking around with oxygen tanks or something. Yeah, if they did, it would be so (laughs) boring. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Again, this is, yeah. I was picturing, like, the Stegosaurus with, like, a little backpack and little things in its nose. But... (laughs) Yeah, then it just gets too cute. (laughs) Uh, Oh, man, we've we've really derailed. (laughs) We're definitely outside of scene six. This movie's, like, the spiritual sequel... To um, uh, land before time, <laughs> and and I as a as a kid, this movie had I had the some of the toys. This was an exciting thing to see dinosaurs in this kind of realism. Did you guys feel like that? Well, yeah. I I don't have a huge nostalgic attachment to this movie, but like I was saying, my boyfriend definitely does, and it had a huge impact on him. Um, same as you probably just got super super into dinosaurs, and I know that it did this for a lot of people our age. Yeah. Um, those dinosaurs toys ruined me for those toys they have at the Natural History Museum. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that much. The Jurassic Park toys were oh, way cooler. They were way cooler. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. I had a Tyrannosaurus, and like a chunk came out of its side, and you could see. Oh, it that's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, and uh, yeah, well. Well, I guess we just wanted to get your opinion about Jurassic Park since since you'll probably be leaving us. Um, oh, I should have said Hunter's the guest. On this yeah, I'm the guest. I, I, I'm here to talk about 90s fashion for the first six scenes of the movie. <laughs> um, well, this, this movie is jam-packed. I, we'll, we'll see what we keep from this episode. <laughs> yeah. if, if it's sitting anywhere below an hour, you'll know we cut some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And if you want me back on, I'll do it via Skype. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to figure out that Skype yeah. thing. Skype technology. We'll do it. <laughs> um, you guys have anything else for this Jurassic part? <laughs> no, I think that sums it up. All right. Well, uh, I'm Nathan. I'm Hunter. I'm Brienne. Take a bite out of movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Stay quiet for this. Ha 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 